Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095. We're going to look at section 7.2 and 7.3 combined. But before we do that, we're going to review 1.7, which is essentially defining what polynomials are and how to work with them. And the first thing we're going to define is term. A term is a number or the product of a number and a variable. So if, or several variables. So if we look, here's an example of some terms. We have 5. That's just a number. It's a term. We have 4x. And if we recall variables, 4 times x, that's all this really says. So this is a term by itself. Here we have 2 times x times y. The term is 2xy. And then we have this right here. We have just an x. Well, that x by itself, its coefficient is actually 1, that number in front of it. We assume we have 1. So it is a term. So then we have to define numerical coefficients. And I may have gotten a little ahead of myself. I mentioned 1 already. The numerical coefficient is just the number that we actually see in front of the term or know that is there. As an example, the numerical coefficient for this particular term is 5. The numerical coefficient for this term is the 4. So we're just actually looking at the actual number. This term here, the numerical coefficient is 2. And this one here, well, we don't see a, a number written out front, but we have to assume that it's 1. I recommend not writing that 1 in there. I just do that for the point of illustrating. There is a 1 there, even though it's not written. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some terms, and we're going to determine what are their uh, numerical coefficients. So what is the coefficient of each of these terms? Well, if we look at the first term, the number I see is a 3. So I know that its coefficient, or its number, is 3. Here I just see the r. What do I have to assume? I have to assume I have at least one of these r's to have any r's at all. So I assume that its numerical coefficient is 1. If we look at the next term, well, there's a couple of variables here. But it's the number I'm concerned with. So its number is 6. That is its coefficient. So we have the coefficients of 3, 1, and 6. Those are our coefficients. All right, we're going to move to the next board here. And we're going to define a few more terms. The first term we're going to define is a polynomial. A polynomial is the sum or difference of terms that contain variables. Uh, <clears throat> we have some specific names for the type of polynomials that we encounter. If there is just a single term which has a numerical coefficient, that's what our k stands for here, and a variable, this is called a monomial. Mono meaning one, or one and nomial number. So we're saying there's only one number here, and it's this value here. A single term is called a monomial. What if we have two terms where this is a coefficient and a variable, and this is a number? We have two terms. By indicates 2. We have two numbers, binomial. If we have three terms that are separated by sums or differences, we can see, hey, this one's raised to a power, which makes it different than this. They're the same variable, but we're doing different mathematical operations to it. We see three terms. We have a trinomial. Um, <clears throat> if we have more than three terms, we generalize it and just call it a general polynomial. So if it has more than three terms, we call it a polynomial. Let's look at some examples of monomials, binomials, trinomials. And we'll write an example for a polynomial. For the first one here, our monomial, one example is 4 times x. And we can see how this uh, models that. We have a numerical coefficient. And hopefully, we identify that as 4. And we have a variable x. Here, we have 3x squared. Well, our variable is x, and it's being squared raised to the second power. And its coefficient is 3. But there is just one term here, so it's a monomial. And here, we have 16xyz squared. Even though it has more than one variable, it's a single product making it a single term. It's all multiplication. 16 times x times y times z times itself, z squared, right? That's one term, a monomial. Here, we have our binomials, which is two terms separated by addition or subtraction. We say, OK, we have 
this term here, which is 4x, and we have this term here, which is a constant, 3. Uh, this one here, we have 5y squared minus x. So we have two terms. That's a binomial. Here we have x plus y. We have two variables. This is a binomial because this term is different than this term. They're separated by addition or subtraction. Finally, a trinomial, three different terms. They may have the same variable. They may have different variables. But what we're looking at to identify is how many terms do we have. We have one, two, three terms, making it a trinomial. 5x squared plus 2x plus 7, separated by addition or subtraction. Three terms, trinomial. Here we have x squared plus 3y minus 4z, again, another trinomial. So let's look at an example of a polynomial. Maybe uh, we have something 4x uh, plus 3y minus 7z, uh, let's see, plus 5. We could continue on. This is a polynomial. We don't have a general term for more than 3, so we just call it a polynomial. They're actually all defined as polynomials. But for these specific three, we have specific names. A single term monomial, two terms binomial, three terms trinomial, and a polynomial is what we generally use for more than three. And we can see 4 is our numerical coefficient, 3 is our numerical coefficient, 7 is a numerical coefficient, and so is 5. So we can see that we can identify that using what we had talked about, defining coefficients. Now we're going to look at degrees of polynomials. Here we have a series of monomials, a term we defined in the previous video. Uh, to determine the degree of a polynomial, we look at the power of the variables, or the power sum of the variables, where we add them all together. And we'll see one example of that. So to determine the degree, we just look at the power and say, well, there's only one variable here. Its power is 3. This indicates its degree. This would be a third degree monomial, or a third degree polynomial if there were more terms and they were less than this 3. If we look at this monomial here, we have an r. Well, this is our variable because we don't know what r is. It's just holding the place of a number. What is its power? Well, if we don't have a power written on a variable, we have to assume there is at least one of them. So its power is 1. The exponent here would be 1. So this is a first degree polynomial. This here is just a constant. It's just a number. I could put any variable in here and raise it to no power, a power of 0. And anything to the 0 power uh, is 1. When you explore your rules of exponents, you'll learn a little bit more about that. But since I don't see a variable here, I have to assume it is of degree 0, or the 0th degree. And I know that's kind of an interesting concept and maybe troubling at times. But if there is no variable and it's just a constant, it would be degree 0 because we don't see a variable. This one here, this is a little tougher because we have more than one variable. It's still a monomial. It's a, uh, a single term of a product here. We have 3 times x squared times y times z, the multiplication by adjacency. If we look at this, to determine its degree, we have to sum up all the powers of the variables. So I have a power of 2. Here I don't see a power, so I assume 1. I have to have at least one of them for y to exist here. And I have 1z, so its power is 1. Oh. And if I sum these, I have the degree of this monomial. So 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. So 2, 3, 4. The degree of this polynomial, or in this case, a monomial, is 4. Um, when it comes to polynomials that are not just monomials, maybe they're binomials or trinomials or just general polynomials that have many terms, we would like to have a little bit of standard, and that's writing them in descending order. If I were to group these in descending order, let's just do this as practice. I like. By descending order, I mean we like to have them in the order of highest power to lowest power, or highest degree to lowest degree. Well, if we look at these three here, we, or four, we already determined that this has the highest degree, because four is greater than any of the others. So I would write this first. So 
The next one would be, well, what's the less number? 3 would be next. And that was this term here, 4y cubed. And the next one would be this, which is 1. We only had 1r. And then we had the constant. So what I've done is I've written these in descending order. When it comes to polynomials and we can rearrange terms, we want to write them in a descending order. So let's look at this example here. I have 5x squared minus 3x squared y plus 2x squared y z. So we have many variables. They have different powers. So the first thing I'm going to do is assess the degree of each of these terms, just like we did with the monomial, even though this is a trinomial, because we have three terms that are separated by addition or subtraction. So if I look at this, it is of degree 2. And I'm going to write 2 degrees. And that's a little symbol we use for degrees. I look at this one. I say, well, we have two x's and one y. That's a total of 3. So this would be a third degree monomial. And this last term here is x squared, 1y, 1z. So it is a fourth degree. Well, we like to have them in descending order. I want the highest degree first, then the next, and then the lowest. So if this is my highest degree, I'm going to write it first, 2x squared, y, z. The next one is this. This is my third degree, so I'm going to write this one. This uh, addition or subtraction belongs to that number. So that negative has to come with that 3. So that's my third degree. And then my second degree, this is a positive 5x squared. All right, and we can see that this is now in descending order. Now that it's in descending order, I can determine the degree of the entire polynomial. And that's simply looking at what was the highest degree. If you put it in uh, descending order, the easiest way to do it is look at the first term. The degree of this is 4. This is a fourth degree polynomial. Fourth degree polynomial. Now, a common mistake is to add up all of the powers. Do not do that. It is just the degree of the highest or leading term if you write it in descending order. So this, the highest degree was 4 for any of the single terms. Here we have fourth degree polynomial. That's the degree of the polynomial. OK, so now that we understand what functions are and function notation, and we apply that to polynomials, and we know how to evaluate expressions, well, now we can look at polynomials, and we can determine a few things. The first thing we're going to look at is, what is the degree of this polynomial? Well, looking at this polynomial, it is a second degree. That is the highest power of any variables that we have in here. And we see there's only one variable. Here, we have a first degree polynomial. And hopefully, we recognize that as being a linear equation. It is a first degree polynomial. Now, what if we're asked to find, as an example, p of 4? Well, since we're familiar with, with function notation, we know that this is just the input value. Replace this into every value for x in that function. So to find p of 4, I'm going to replace my x values. And I'm just rewriting it using parentheses everywhere I see my variable. And I put this value in. So now I can evaluate it. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 6 is going to be 96. Took a little bit of mental math. If you need to work it out, that's fine too. Negative 4 times 4 is a negative 16 plus 5. Now we can simply do that math. And notice that I'm following order of operations, doing exponents before multiplication, and then finishing it up with the addition or subtraction. So 96 minus 16 is 80. 80 plus 5 is 85. So p of 4, we found, equals 85. We're able to evaluate that function. And one other thing I want to point out is even though we were able to identify the degree of the function, notice the functions are both written in standard form. And what I mean by that is they're written in descending order, the highest degree term followed by the next term until we get to the constant. So we see our second degree term, first degree term, constant, or otherwise known as our zero degree term. 
And here we have a first degree polynomial. So the degree, uh, the first term of degree 1 is written first. The constant is second. That is standard form for polynomials. Being that we found 85 when we evaluated p of 4, that was for the function p of x. Notice p of 4 related us or drew our attention to p of x. Here we have g of the quantity a plus 1. Well, this is the function g of x. So we want to change those values so we don't confuse this function with this function. p of x is a different function than g of x. So let's find this value right here. To find that value, I have to replace the x value with a plus 1, evaluate it. So it's 4 times x plus 5. I'm replacing that x value with this quantity. I'm evaluating it using function notation. And then I can distribute this 4 times a, 4 times 1, plus the 5. And now we can just simply combine like terms, and we get 4a plus 9. So the function g of x evaluated for a plus 1, g of a plus 1 equals 4a plus 9. All right, so now we're going to look at uh, doing some operations with polynomials. Sometimes we'll have different functions, and we'll have to add them together. So if I want to add two polynomials, I look here. And the first thing I want to identify is I have a second degree, and I have a first degree polynomial. So my highest degree is 2. When I simplify this, we'll see uh, when I combine like terms, and that's something that we should be familiar with is combining like terms, that I should get something of uh, degree 2 or less. All right, so if we want to add, well, essentially, not only are we going to combine like terms, but we're also going to watch the sign because we don't want to make a sign error. If I'm adding, well, essentially, I'm going to add 2x and I'm going to add 5, kind of like a distributive property. And we'll see when it's subtraction, we have to be very careful to watch that sign. So if it's just combining like terms and uh, distributing as a, a thought, process, we can say, OK, I have x squared plus no other x squared. So x squared stands alone. There are no other like terms. I have a negative 6x, and I'm going to add a 2x. Well, negative 6x and 2x are like terms. So I'm going to combine them. Negative 6 and positive 2 is negative 4 of these x terms. And then I have 3, and I'm going to add a positive 5. 3 plus 5 is going to give me 8. And I can see here, I have a second degree polynomial. And I make sure it's in descending form. I want it in sta uh, standard form, descending order. All right, what if I have to subtract? Well, the first thing I recognize is, hey, this isn't in a standard form. I could write it in descending order. But I could also do that at the very end. And that's what we'll do. We'll just wait till the very end to put it into uh, uh, standard form. So I look here, and I have 3x squared minus 4 minus 2x cubed. Well, that is my highest power. So the degree of the function is third degree, or the polynomial, excuse me. And I'm going to subtract the quantity of 4x squared minus 2 plus 5x cubed. And I recognize this one. 3 is the highest value. This is a third degree polynomial. So I'm subtracting. Now, this is where we have to be careful, because we have to think about this. This negative applies to everything in these parentheses. So I have to think about it as distributing. And if I distribute that, I could rewrite it as negative 4x squared, negative negative 2. Well, two negatives make a positive. Negative 5x cubed is negative 5x cubed. Now that I've simplified that, I can essentially eliminate these parentheses and combine like terms. Well, I have a 3x squared, and I have a negative 4x squared. These are like terms. And sometimes I like to underline the first like terms that I come across. Or, and then maybe I assess it and say, well, here's, these are just numbers. So I'm going to box in my numbers. So I know that these shapes are like terms, so I don't get lost in the math. And I say, well, this one's cubed. Maybe I'm going to circle that one and circle this one, because they're both cubes. Now I'm going to combine my lines, combine my squares, com combine my circles. It's the same thing as combining like terms. I'm combining like shapes. So it's a tool that you can use when you get into higher ordered polynomials. And it can get kind of 
distracting with all these values we have. So 3x squared minus 4x squared would give me a negative x squared, because 3 minus 4 would be negative 1, negative x squared. Now, if I do the constants, negative 4 and 2, well, negative 4 plus 2 would give me a negative 2. And then negative 2x is cubed minus 5x is cubed, same sign, combine. So I'm going to get negative 7x is cubed. Now, as I said when we started this one, it wasn't in descending order. It wasn't in a standard form. Well, now is where I can do that. I could have done it back here, but now I can do it here. It's easier to do it once than having to do it twice. So my highest degree is the negative 7x cubed, cubed being the highest degree. So I'd write negative 7x cubed. My next degree is squared, so minus this x squared, and then minus 2. So it goes in descending order of highest power to next all the way down to the constant. So that's how we work with adding and subtracting uh, polynomials. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a similar example to the last one we did. And I'm going to ask you to try this one yourself. And I'll give you the, the heads up. Because it's subtraction, make sure you don't lose that negative. Make sure you distribute it to everything in these parentheses, because we are subtracting that entire quantity. So combine those like terms after distributing that negative. And thank you for watching.